everybody. Welcome to Innovative Weed Control in Garden Beds. Uh, while we wait for a few more people to join, I'm just going to pop on a video for you all to view. Let's talk about how we formulate active ingredients into a final product and what sorts of ingredients go into them. I'm going to pick the example of a suspension concentrate, also known as a flowable. As we may have seen before, active ingredients are very often not happier in water. They can be extremely hydrophobic and they just don't want to go in. So that's the first obstacle we've got to overcome. We've got to get the active ingredient into water. Now we're going to need some help there and that help is going to come in the form of surfactants. Now a surfactant very simply is a molecule that has two parts on it. One part that likes oil and one part that likes water built into the same molecule. And one surfactant we're going to need is a wetting agent. So this is a surfactant that will stick to the active ingredient particles and allow them to go into water. Very often that's not enough because once they go into water, they're still going to want to stick back together. Remember, they hate being in water and they're going to do everything they can to avoid the water. So to prevent them from sticking back together, we're going to need another surfactant that's functioning as a dispersant. These very often are polymeric or long molecule surfactants that allow those particles to be separated. If we can find that right combination of wetting agents and dispersants, we can really change the physical properties of the active ingredient, which I'll demonstrate now. So the active ingredient is clearly not happy in water by adding these surfactants. We can make the active ingredient a little happier in water as you can see. The AI is going into the water. Now unfortunately you see what happens, the active ingredient settles down to the bottom of the jug and that's because most active ingredients have a higher density than water. And that's going to be a real problem if you're developing a flowable that's going to be in a package because the active ingredient would all settle to the bottom, possibly hard packing, and you would never get it back up. So to stop the active ingredient from settling out, we're going to need some help in the form of a suspension agent, something to make that formulation thicker or raise the viscosity to keep those particles from wanting to crash down so quickly. Now, a property we try to build into our formulations is known as shear thinning rheology. Now, that's a very fancy way of saying a fluid that's very thick when it's sitting still, but once you go to shake it or move it, it turns into a liquid, which I can demonstrate. So as you can see, this material is very thick. It's basically solid. But when I go to put some energy into it or shake it, it now turns into a liquid that flows. Because the ideal formulation is very, very thick while sitting on the shelf, so the particles aren't settling out. But then when you go to open the cap and shake it and pour it, we want it to flow. And that's what we try to build into our products. Because we have water in this formulation, we have the chance that microbes like fungi and bacteria can actually grow in the packaged product. And that can be very bad because microbes could digest some of the other ingredients. More importantly, our suspension agents. So if the microbes digest that, that's going to allow the active ingredients to settle out. So a preservative is often, often very important to put into a formulation to stop that from happening. Because we have surfactants present and you're in a spray tank situation where you have water moving and air entrainment, you have the potential to get a lot of foam in that spray tank. And foam is extremely bad because that can actually strip surfactants off your active ingredient particles and then they're no longer going to be happy in there. So very often we might need to add some kind of an anti-foam system. Now to show you how important that is, I have an example of two formulations, one with a poor anti-foam system and one with a really good high quality system. These have been diluted in water, and now we'll shake them up. And very clearly, you can see the difference between the formulations and how important that ingredient can be to minimize foam. Since we are developing a water-based formulation, and we all know what happens to water at 32 degrees, it can be extremely important to build in an antifreeze system. This will allow that formulation to maintain its quality if it happens to be subjected to freezing temperatures or even freeze-thaw cycles. Sometimes we can build adjuvants into a formulation. An adjuvant, very simply, is a, is a compound that allows the active ingredient to work better, allows it to penetrate a leaf cuticle or maybe an insect outer skeleton, and sometimes we can build those directly into formulations. Buffers can be an important ingredient in water-based formulations, and these are used to control the pH. That's especially critical when you have an active ingredient that's very sensitive to pH extremes because it could cause chemical instability of the active ingredient. For contact fungicides, such as chlorothalonil in our dacanil line, rain fastness is extremely important to get the length of control that you expect. That's why we have done a lot of research and development to discover rain fast technologies that we can build into that formulation so that after application, the deposits remain intact even after irrigation. Obviously, a very important ingredient in a water-based formulation is water. 
but it's very important to maintain the quality of the water that's going into that formulation because poor water quality can result in a formulation that's not as robust as you want it to be. So this is why in production, Syngenta maintains the quality of its water to the very highest of standards. One aspect of a suspension concentrate that's very difficult to demonstrate here is particle size. So the active ingredient crystals as they come out of synthesis can be fairly large, up to a few millimeters in diameter. And that's a real problem because if you did not reduce that particle size, they could clog your nozzles, they're going to settle out very quickly in the packaged product and even your spray tank. And we even have some evidence that particle size distributions can impact biological efficacy, length of control, and even turf safety for some AIs. So this is why it's important when developing a suspension concentrate that we know what we're doing when we mill the active ingredient. And there's a lot of science behind understanding how active ingredient crystals behave when they're milled so we know how to mill them properly. So putting this all together, once we have developed the formulation, which by the way takes anywhere from one to three years depending on that formulation, going through hundreds of different prototypes, we found the right ingredients and we've milled them to the correct particle size, the final formulation would look something like this. So this is an example of Barricade 4FL. So with the help of the formulation, we have taken an active ingredient like perdiamine that is extremely hydrophobic and transformed it into a product that you can now add to your spray tank, mix up, and apply. And that's what formulations is all about, taking the active ingredient, which is essentially useless, and turning it into something that's very useful and user-friendly. It's also very important to realize that after we've developed a formulation that has the robustness we're looking for, we don't stop there. There's an extensive amount of testing that goes on to make sure it's going to be robust in a wide range of different environmental conditions, high temperatures, cold temperatures, cycling temperatures. In addition, we test formulations for biological efficacy, because as we mentioned before, formulation ingredients and even particle size could impact control. So we want to test that to make sure we have the optimized formulation. Finally, we test that formulation on a wide variety of turf grass species because that formulation could have components in there that cause phytotoxicity. We need to make sure that formulation is going to be safe. We at Syngenta go to great lengths to develop high performance quality products so that our customers have the best experience possible when using them. This takes a tremendous amount of resource and scientific expertise. A very good afternoon to you all uh, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Brett Morris. I work in technical services for Syngenta, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, in turf and landscape uh, and I've been with the company now since um, about August of 2021 so some of you I may have met uh, in our recent visits uh, last year to New Zealand uh, and some of you I look forward to meeting uh, later this year uh, when we revisit New Zealand on a number of occasions uh, to discuss uh, you know any concerns you may have or any uh, opportunities where uh, you think products from the Syngenta range are going to uh, suit your purpose. So it was a nice little sort of lead-in in terms of that video in terms of what goes into formulating products. And that product in particular today was the one that we're going to talk about is Barricade itself. Uh, because Barricade is so much more than just a good turf grass uh, pre-emergent herbicide. Uh, in recent years, we've done a lot of work in the landscape space, in the nursery space, uh, open space, so councils and things like that uh, throughout Australia. Uh, and we're looking forward to, you know, introducing the product uh, into some of the, the open space, uh, council space and, and nursery space over in New Zealand at the moment as well. So uh, we're very confident that um, you know, the results we've found, and I'm going to share some of those today with you, uh, are results that you will experience uh, if you do try the product out in your situation. So I'm going to start just by opening up the session. Uh, on, the, on your little chat bar on Zoom, you'll see a little sort of chat icon. So as I go along, if you do have any questions, uh, we have our team in Sydney on hand who will be recording those questions. Uh, and then we can um, you know, process some, some of those as we move through. Uh, but towards the end of the presentation, after the presentation, we'll have a, a general Q&A session. So if you do have any queries, uh, on the product itself, then uh, we'll we'll have a Q and A after that. So today's agenda is going to be broken down into four different points. Uh, what is Barricade, the product itself, and what goes into it? Uh, you just had a little bit of a brief then on the active called Prodiamine, uh, how to apply it to get the best out of it, and and how to apply not just Barricade but 
you know, all products in general. So we've got a couple of little uh, tips and tricks that go along with that, uh, that you can take across, not just Barricade, but other products um, that you may be applying at this point in time as well. Uh, as I said, we've done some recent studies uh, in Australia, uh, in council scenarios uh, over here, so it, with some quite promising results. So we'll have a look at some of those results. And then obviously just some watch outs that go with it, just some tips and tricks uh, so you can get the best out of the product when applying. So Barricade as an introduction, what is it? Barricade, when you apply it, is a product that will give you up to six months control of grassy weeds plus broadleaf weeds. Uh, and not just turf, as we said in the introduction, but also uh, in open space management. Uh, so it's very consistent. And that comes down to a variety of different uh, means within the product itself, how the active constituent works, some of those other adjuvants and things like that that go into the product. Uh, and then when you apply it uh, as per the label directions, uh, you will then realise those benefits in your situation that you're managing. Uh, and it's also... Uh, as you would have seen with that introductory video there, uh, a very high level and excellence of formulation that goes into it. So not just to get the, the product into suspension, maintain it in suspension uh, and maintain that active constituent uh, integrity uh, once you receive the product and then applied, but uh, for the equipment uh, and what you're applying it with. So, you know, staining of sprayers or uh, if you do happen to have some overspray onto a, a path of some kind or the side of a structure, I mean, it's easily removed with water. So uh, it, it's, it's a very high uh, level formulation, as with all the formulations within the Syngenta range. Uh, and you'll find that, you know, as I said, the uh, ease of use uh, and ease of application that goes along with it. And user friendly is one of the key uh, functions with Barricade as well. So uh, when it comes to a variety of different situations, uh, you can easily apply it to where your, your target situation, uh, and then it's simply re-entry when dry. So there's no withholding periods. It's what's, what's called on labels withholding period. You know, certain chemistries might have you know, different times. It might be 24 hours, two days, one week, something like that. So barricade itself, as soon as it's dry, you're safe to re-enter. Uh, as you would have seen with that uh, formulation video as well, and there's quite a few sort of uh, ingredients that go into making up the formulation. And with the barricade formulation, it's known as a suspension concentrate. And suspension concentrate, such as barricade, is normally uh, very tank mixable with other, other products. So uh, you can be confident that if you do need to try and mix something else with it, uh, then on a general scale, uh, you will have success. But as always, you should jar test uh, that mix first before you do it in a large scale. What we do know with the actual active ingredient as well, it's very, very high performance. And it's, it's we can simply say it's unchallenged in that scenario uh, because it will not move. So once we put it in the ground, once we position it where we need it to be, that's where it's going to stay. And that's where the activity will, will remain for up to six months. And Zero off-target move, it simply comes with solubility. So we'll have a look at some different active ingredients and how they all move. Uh, but when you combine uh, how they bind in the soil with how the formulation is in terms of solubility, it runs into what's called a leaching potential. Uh, and as we'll see with Bredire Mine, it's very, very low. And as a result of all of that, very stable and very safe in our ornamental situations. And this is where in recent years we found it's very, very well suited to landscape and, and garden bed areas because it's providing that barrier at the soil surface. So barricade is working within that top 10 to 15 millimetres and that's where the zone of activities for any weed germination is going to occur. So if we have a weed sort of transfer in from a surrounding area, it tries to take root, it's going to then impact that layer that barricade has within that uh, area that you've treated and then that weed will die. The key though is, is that your mature plants, so your trees and your shrubs and this little animation that we have here, the root structure is gonna be much lower, right? So it's gonna be beyond that 10 to 15 millimeters. So therefore it's out of that zone of activity and it's not gonna have any effect on it uh, as long as that plant is mature. 
So the way the prodiamine works is the active ingredient. It's known as a mitotic in inhibitor. So mitosis, as we all know, is that process where the cells create a duplicate of their chromosomes before cell division. And in this little animation here, we're at that stage called metaphase where they start to line up and then the cells will divide. So by disrupting the, the process of mitosis, therefore the cells cannot divide. When they cannot divide, the plant cannot start to nurture and grow itself. Uh, and then as it's taking in that active ingredient, uh, it will die. So you, you might start to see uh, instances where you might start to see a little bit of germination right, of a weed uh, that's been treated in an area with something like barricade. But as soon as it impacts that um, active ingredient, it'll then die out. You will then have instances where you might have weeds within the actual organic matter, within the, the profile or your potting media or something like that where they do start to germinate, right, it will take in the active ingredient and you won't see them at all. So, so it's the way that general, in, in general, that pre-emergent herbicides work. So the active ingredient prodiamine, this is a root absorbed uh, herbicide. So as I mentioned, where you place it is where it stays. And this graph is sourced from the herbicide handbook, a very good resource in terms of all things talking herbicides. On the left-hand column, you can see a variety of different active ingredients. Prodiamine, and some of these are going to be quite common to you all. And you may have used them, may, you may be currently using them. And when we look across some of these columns here, KOC, KOC is the ability of an active ingredient to bind itself to soil carbon. The C is carbon. Okay, so our humic matter, things like that in the soil. When we combine that then with the soil half-life, okay, Prodiamine, a very long half life. When we combine that with solubility, we come out then with what's called a leaching potential. So, solubility is the ability of a herbicide or an active ingredient to move within the soil profile once it's been applied. So, a very low solubility means it's not going to move, right? It's not what will be called non mobile, right? As we start to move up those numbers there, the concern then is that when you apply something like, you know, in this instance here, a pre-emergent herbicide active ingredient, it's applied and then you might have some rainfall three, four, seven days later or something like that after application. The higher that solubility index means then that there is that potential for that active ingredient to move off target and it can then either leach lower in the profile it can move laterally down slopes and things like that as well. So prodiamine, the active ingredient in barricade, when you combine the uh, ability of it to bind to carbon, its half-life and its solubility, it has very little to no leaching potential. So as long as you position it in the zone of activity well, the half-life then means you will get that extended period of up to six months control in your uh, weed control programs. So how do we apply it and how do we get the best from it? Barricade sits high in the soil. So as I said a little bit earlier, a couple of slides back, 10 to 15 millimetres is generally that area in which the active constituent sits in the soil profile. So it's very important, therefore, to ensure that when we're applying it, we're applying it to mature stands. Okay, so in that little graphic on the bottom there of your screen, what you can see is if we're going to be using transplanted uh, transplanted stock cuttings or tube stock or something like that. We all know the tube stock, very little root mass uh, that goes along with it, very little root depth. So if we're putting in new plants into a garden bed or something like that, then we do not recommend that you apply barricade in that situation. We need to ensure that we have a good root development occurring and already established before the pre-emergent herbicide is applied because we don't want emerging roots or anything like that being impacted uh, by the active constituent. So it's well suited, as we say, to landscape situations, and we'll have a look at some work in that. But very important to get the best out of it, don't apply it to young plants. Make sure that the roots first are well established before any application takes place. So barricade sits at the surface. As I said, weed seeds can be blown in, sitting on those surface and start to germinate. That's where we need that zone of activity to occur. 
So when applying it, we are also looking at water volume. We're going to be looking at equipment that we're applying it with and nozzles. We're then going to be following that up with some irrigation afterwards to position it where we need it to be. If we're not careful with terms of application or too much or too high water volume or not taking into consideration some of the factors around soil types and the like, and we'll touch on those shortly, or putting too much irrigation or receiving rainfall within 48 hours after applying, there is that chance then that it could move, okay? So, and we're not gonna get those results. And should then the situation occur on that image on the right, where we have a weed seed float in and sit on the surface, then we'll start to observe weeds being germinating. So at the top, 10 to 15 millimetres, but positioning it well, you'll get the best out of it. And one of those important attributes of applying barricade is wash in. So on the label, you'll notice a wash in application. And what that means in a nursery or landscape situation, it will stay three millimetres of irrigation afterwards. And what we're doing is we're applying that ingredient and we're positioning it. The water that you're applying post application will not dilute it. Okay, so it's, the water is only there to move that active constituent into the profile. But if we're not careful and we apply too much, as I said in that last image where we're showing the, the active constituent moving further down into that pot, okay, that can happen by too higher application volume of water going on afterwards or rainfall occurring within that 24 to 48 hour period post application or rainfall and any additional irrigation or any addition, additional irrigation by itself within the 24 to 48 hours afterwards. So when applying it, we apply it, we irrigate it in, and then we leave it sit for about 48 hours afterwards, and then the active will bind to the soil profile. Any irrigation after 48, 72 hours then, the product is safe and it, and it will perform as you expect. And everywhere we go, and it's not just a uh, an irrigation application for a product like Barricade, okay? It's important to know how much water that you're putting on, okay? So it can be a turf product. It can be a, a, a situation like this in a nursery or, or open space scenario. So the label, as you'll note, will say three, three millimetres of irrigation post-application. It's important to know how much are you actually, how, how long do you run your sprinklers for to apply three millimetres of irrigation? And if you're a little bit unsure on that, a good way to measure is to use a catch can analysis like this. So you can buy these catch cans, they have little gradients on the outside that will show you one millimetre, two millimetre, three and beyond. You place those at even spacings around your area that you're treating, run your irrigation then for like five minutes or something, and then measure how much you're getting. And it's another good way to check your irrigation system in terms of coverage and uniformity that goes along with it as well. So a nice little tip there, if you're a little bit unsure, just run a catch can analysis to ensure that you know how long three millimetres is in terms of a runtime on your system. In other terms of the label itself, we can break it down a little bit more for you in terms of rates. Now, the ornamental rate in barricade is between four to eight litres per hectare. But if we're using backpack sprays and things like that, so 5, 15, 25 litres, there's an easy guide for you in terms of coverage on how much to apply within that given uh, unit capacity. So again, this comes back uh, to calibration of your equipment. It's very important that we ensure that we're applying the right water volume, which is a minimum of 500 litres per hectare of water. Uh, it's important then that we're applying the right amount of barricade within that uh, scenario itself as well, uh, to ensure then that we're getting, we're not over applying or under applying the product. So there's, there's a little bit of guide here uh, for you uh, and we'll be uh, any other queries on that, then please contact us and we can share that with you. And I will just add one more point on calibration. Uh, if you do have any queries on calibration, then just head to the St. Jenna Turf website and there's some guides on there for you on how to calibrate sprayers. 
So successful applications come down to a couple of points. Application volume. Okay, so as I said, this is a water volume. So minimum of 500 litres per hectare of water needs to be applied with the product. And we need to ensure then that we're using the right nozzles that go with it. So the nozzles are extra coarse and high volume because we're positioning this product into the soil. So we need to apply the big droplets. They're going to be coated with the product. We apply that into that soil profile and that will help position it a little bit further down. We then follow it with three millimetres of irrigation or rainfall. Now, that second point there is probably an important one, and it's a point that we'll touch on today. And that is whether you need to tank mix this product with something like glyphosate. Now, obviously, if we're going to be tank mixing with glyphosate, then we don't want to be watering it on straight away. Right? So Barricade gives you that flexibility of washing in with up to seven days. And when we consider that, if you don't have any irrigation as well, so let's say we're applying it in an open space uh, scenario, we might have some, some big you know, uh, garden beds uh, out in an area that you're maintaining, you may not have any irrigation at all within those situations. This is where you need to trust your weather service in a way, your MET service, okay? So if you're looking at your weather forecast coming up and that weather forecast might say, well, we're due to receive two to three millimetres of rain tomorrow or two days time or something like that, then you can tank mix with something like a glyphosate if you need to do that, go out and apply the product, and then hopefully, fingers crossed, the MET service gets it right. And then you receive your two to three millimetres of irrigation a couple of days later. And that will then wash that product in for you. Because as we said, one of those introductory slides, the excellence in formulation with a product like Barricade means it's UV stable. So you can apply it. It can be under direct UV light outside. It's not going to break down. Okay, so... We do have that flexibility within the product as well. And I think that's a very important point, okay? Uh, if we're spraying barricade on its own and you do have overhead irrigation facilities available, then wash it in. If you do have, uh, if you are spraying barricade on its own and you do not have any overhead irrigation uh, situation straight away, keep an eye on that weather forecast. And if you're confident that you're going to receive two or three millimetres of irrigation, uh, in the upcoming seven day period, then you can go and apply it. Same if you do need to tank mix it with another product like a glyphosate, because we want that activity of the glyphosate to impact the weed, emerging weeds first uh, before the product is then washed in. So, how does it look in open space management? And this is some work that we've done over the last couple of years uh, just to you know, understand the product more and basically demonstrate its power in this sort of scenario. So in this situation here, we have four images. And what we can do if we're spraying barricade on its own, you can spray it directly across the top of your ornamental situation. And there are a large number of plants which we'll touch on uh, that it's been tested on. Uh, but all these uh, photos that you see on this right-hand side of your screen are images where it has been demonstrated and has been worked uh, with Barricade. So we're simply coming in, we're spraying it over the top, and then we're washing that in. And it's, if we're going to be spraying over the top of ornamental situations like this, then it is important that you do wash it off. Uh, if you are in that scenario uh, where you are spraying large open beds that do not have any irrigation within them, then it's important not to apply it directly over the top of that, but to try and apply it around any open space that you're trying to control your weeds in. But in the situations and all these demonstrations that we've done so far, uh, in these four different scenarios here, we've been able to reduce the amount of treatments that go into those open space areas. Okay, and we realise how difficult here in Australia anyway, trying to find staff is and retain good staff and things like that. So we need to look towards tools like Barricade to help cut down on the amount of labour required to maintain nice, clean garden beds in your area. So what it will do then by controlling the weeds for the longevity that it provides, it's then going to cut down on the amount of glyphosate. If you're out there using glyphosate now, you can then either tank mix, as I said, with Barricade, uh, but then post that knockdown, any pre emerger control for up to six months within these areas is going to reduce the amount of glyphosate that you may be currently applying. 
And if you are currently applying something like a glyphosate in these areas uh, on a semi-regular or regular basis, depending on the time of year, then it's going to reduce the amount of labour required to keep these areas clean. Therefore, we can transfer that labour to other areas within your jurisdiction uh, and we can focus on other areas like that. So on a whole, uh, we see a much better uh, outcome in terms of workplace health and safety uh, and we see a much uh, higher level of reduction in terms of labour management and effort required to go in to keep these areas cl clean and weed free. If you are producing nursery stock for your particular area, then it's a perfect product uh, for your base as well. So over here, we have a number of nurseries that spray barricade around their perimeters, right? Because the perimeters are where our weed seeds are when I mean, they're being transferred in, whether that by wind or birds or however else. Uh, but they do keep clean their, their uh, outside areas with products like barricade as well. So if you reduce that weed source right at the actual source as well, so we're not transferring sort of weeds in with products or within pots, I should say, uh, which then go into the areas that you're managing, and it's a good sort of knockdown point as well. So very handy to keep uh, those areas clean, again, for extended periods of time. So to prove it's worth what we did uh, in 2021, uh, we worked with um, one of our, our key um, contractors, one, a key contractor over here in Australia called the IVM Group. Uh, and they went to the ACT government. ACT is where Canberra is, our national capital. Uh, and then they said, look, we wanna try this product out and demonstrate how long it's going to last for you in terms of weed management within a, a public area. So the ACT government said, great, let's go and do it. So they went to a public area, and I'm going to share some of these results with you. So what they did, they tried four different treatments. Okay, and They tried a straight glyphosate, uh, and you can see the actual rate that's been applied there as well. Uh, the concentration of the AI, so a 360 gram per litre isopropylamine glyphosate was used in this. So they've used that by itself. They've then mixed the glyphosate with the simazine, trying to get a little bit of pre-emergent out of it as well. They've then mixed in barricade. And the low rate, as we say, though, with barricade is four litres per hectare. The high rate is eight litres per hectare. Water volume, again, we come back to that minimum level, 500 litres per hectare, treated on the 27th of May, 2021. And the important dot point there is that one right in the middle. As you can see there, during that period of the trial period, 925 millimetres of rain was recorded. So almost double the long-term average, right? So a very important point when it comes back to some of the points we've made so far. Once it's applied and once it's bound in the soil, it's not going to move and you will get that extended longevity out of it. The results look like this. Trial layout broken down into four areas. So I said glyphosate only, simazine, and then glyphosate with four and eight litres of barricade. So then went back a couple of times during the course of the trial, and then went back at nine months after treatment. So when we say down the bottom there, glyphosate 9-MAT, 9-MAT means months after treatment. So in the glyphosate treated area on the left-hand side of your screen, so we can see a lot of weed act activity is back. Okay, we've got a lot of flea bane in there. We've got a lot of other common weeds. There's some dicots and things like that as well. On the right-hand side, the simazine has provided a little bit high level of control in terms of activity against that. But again, we've got flea bane and, and that back through those uh, garden beds as well. But I noticed with the barricade, uh, four litres per hectare on the left-hand side and eight litres per hectare on the right. We did a weed count at the end of it very little to no weeds within those areas and that's at nine months okay so um the label will stay up to six right and we can assure you that you will get up to six months providing that you apply it well and you apply it as per label directions and as we can see at nine months after treatment when tank mixed with the glyphosate to knock down the weed population that was there to start with and then to 
pre-emerge against the emerging weed populations coming through. As you can see, one treatment, right? This is only one treatment, okay? Uh, you can see how clean those beds are. And it looked like this at the start. So this is the four liter with glyphosate rate to start with. On the left-hand side, day of treatment, nine months later, glyphosate plus barricade at four liters per hectare. Okay, and that's receiving almost double the amount of long-term average rainfall. Almost one metre on rain has fallen on that area. So it's a very, very uh, great result, but you know, it's a result that we were very confident that we would find with the product as well in this scenario. So as a summary of results in terms of vegetation cover, Okay, when we started to look at, and remember this was applied in, in May of 2021, uh, and we look at it then across into March of 2022. On average, now when we look at all the data and we do a vegetation cover uh, in a terms of percentage, about 11%, if we're just spraying straight glyphosate on its own. Uh, but then when we start tank mixing it with, glyphosate, uh, with uh, barricade, and glyphosate, uh, less than 1% in terms of the four litre rate and no weeds at all at the end. So you can look at that and think, well, there's weeds popping up at July and then there's weeds popping up in November. But as I said earlier, these are weeds that might be uh, transferred in to the trial sites or blown in or taken in with other you know, birds or people or things like that on their shoes. And as they start to germinate then, they may start to germinate, but as soon as they impact that layer of barricade within the soil, they then die out. So for a plant, there's just a few points that we need to make sure, and this is the same really with any pesticide that you're going to apply, okay? There's just a few things we need to make sure we get right to get the best out of the product. If you're trying a new product like barricade, Okay, uh, you need just to get to know it to start with. So the first thing is the application technique. So we've spoken about the importance of water volume at minimum 500 litres per hectare. We've spoken about the importance of nozzles, making sure we're using a very coarse droplet size. We need to ensure then that we have a right level of irrigation going on post application to position it where we need to work. The second point is the potting media. Uh, and the species of plant that you're using. Okay, so the potting media itself, we'll touch on that shortly in another slide or two. But obviously, as we went back to where the herbicide handbook said, uh, prodiamine and how it binds to soil carbon, so the amount of organic matter that's going to be within that garden bed mix or in a potting media scenario. Okay, we need to make sure that we're positioning there against a scenario that might be a lot more sandy. And we'll touch on that shortly. The species itself, as we say there, and the type of plants that we used and the development so far, and this product has been registered on the market here in Australia since 2011. And there's been over 160 different plants uh, so far it's been tested on. There are only a very small handful of plants that we know, such as bromeli bromeliads, tree ferns, uh, orchids, uh, that we do not apply it to. Uh, but again, if you are going to go out and try the, the product itself for you, Try it on a small number of plants to start with. And as I said earlier as well, if you're going to consider tank mixing it with something, you always jar test it first, right? So if you're going to be trying it in your situation for the first time, try it on a small area first to make sure that the plant species that you are applying it to is safe to be applied to. And if we're applying it to over the top of some plants, make sure we wash that off. Uh, but any overspray, you will find as I said, about 160 different plants so far, and we found a very, very, very small percentage that it doesn't like. So the majority of plants uh, can be confident that's going to be safe on. I can't really speak to the different types of plants in New Zealand at the moment because we haven't done that work. So test it first to make sure that it's safe on the areas that you're applying to. So how to do that in terms of a trialing procedure? Group a small number of plants together, okay? So just measure out a, a square metre or 10 square metres or something like that. Put some plants in there that you want to test it against, okay? Calibrate the sprayer. 
So I said, if you do have any queries on how to calibrate a sprayer, just head to the Syngenoturf website and there's a guide to calibration on there for you. Apply that product across the top or apply it around the actual base of those plants that you're testing it against and wash that in. Okay, if we're going to be using three millimetres again, uh, if you're a little bit unsure, just do a catch can analysis in the lead up to that to make sure that you know that how much water that you're applying is going to be accurate for that. Spray it on, wash it in, leave it dry, and leave it dry then for 48 hours. Um, don't irrigate immediately. So as I said, leave 48 hours because we don't want then that active constituent to move lower into a pot or lower into a profile before it's bound to the organic carbon. And then just monitor. Monitor those plants and gauge the effects. But as I said, for we spray it across turf. Turf is a monocot, as we all know. Uh, so if you have ornamental grasses or things like that, you can be very confident that it's going to be okay. But just monitor them first, gauge the effects on it before you proceed to a large scale situation. And as I said there, be aware of the different potting media types because we're binding to organic matter. And so high organic content that are in there, it's going to really fix itself at that surface uh, where we need it to be. But sandier profile, if we've got larger ag aggregate within that mix as well, a very porous material media, there is that potential then for that product to move away from that zone of activity uh, and move deeper into that pot. Okay, so you just need to be aware of the different uh, mixes that are out there, uh, or the different mixes that you use. And remember, not one size basically fits all in this sort of situation. So it's something that you, you just need to test for yourself to make sure. Uh, that it's going to be fit for, for purpose for your situation. And again, as we had that little uh, animation towards the start of the presentation today, plant establishment, we need to make sure that our plant have a good deep root system in them before we apply a product like barricade or any pre-emergent herbicide. Okay, so don't apply to newly potted or transplanted seeded plants, right, or a tube stock or something like that. We need to make sure that we have a good developed root system, as we see on the left-hand side there, that image on the, the two plants, one on the right. Okay, we've got a nice, healthy root system going first before we apply a product uh, or any pre-emergent herbicide. So let that uh, develop first. Don't put it on brand-new transplanted plants at all. So to give you a summary on this, Okay, it's a very easy to use product. Okay, once we get the application uh, scenarios right and the application details uh, right and we apply it well and we water it in, uh, remembering you do have that flexibility in terms of irrigation if we're talking larger scale situations. But what it can do for you and what we've demonstrated at the ACT trial um, a, a year or so ago, it will reduce your glyphosate requirements. Okay. So if you do have situations again where we need to tank mix it with glyphosate to knock a population down and then move that active constituent into the soil, right? as we saw that uh, demonstration in the ACT, nine months later, we've got less than half of a percent of wheat population uh, at the four litre rate and zero percent at eight litres. So up to six months, dual season, one application, and that's... One of the things that we're quite proud of with the number of the product range uh, within Syngenta is that you know we can tank mix uh, a couple of things together, but in one pass, we can take out a wide range of different weeds and also insects as well. The technology, the formulation as we started with, with that uh, opening video with our, one of our scientists in the US, okay, uh, it's an, an outstanding formulation that the company has developed, so non-staining. And one of those uh, examples of that, it's used here in the Australian war graves. We had a query once uh, a little some time ago, can we just spray it across the war graves and go across our plaques and things like that in the ground? And yes, you can, it's done and it, it's no problem at all. But if you do find you overspray onto a path or onto the side of a structure or something like that, it's easily washed off. Uh, again, excellent plant safety that goes along with it. You can spray straight across the plants of uh, existing plants, uh, over 160 uh, so far tested, 
Uh, but again, in your situation, just do a small trial to start with uh, to see whether it's good and fit for purpose. When it comes to then uh, human health, um, follow the PPE guidelines that go along with it and are listed on the label. You can re-enter an area once it's dry. You don't, there's no withholding period in that, in that scenario. So it has a great workplace health and safety profile. Uh, and we do find that it has a key or it is a key tool in many IPM programs, uh, not just here in Australia, but uh, around the world where it's used. So I appreciate your time. Um, I'm going to now, I see there's a few Q&As there, Jess, and we'll start working through those. This is, I'm going to leave just the contact details up uh, on this screen. Um, please feel free to contact us. Uh, at any stage, um, and then we'll be more than helpful or more than more than happy to, to work with you to make sure that we get the best results uh, out of the product uh, for your situation. Jess? Thanks for that, Brett. A really great talk. I hope everybody got a lot out of it. Um, I'll jump straight into the questions. Um, if you've got any more, remember there's the Q&A button at the bottom in the toolbar. Um, just throw anything there or um, email us at the email on the screen. Um, so our first question, I think you already answered, um, but just in case, uh, how does uh, Barricade relate to the reduction of glyphosate use as it has only pre-emergent qualities and not knockdown? So it would require a tank mix to achieve both. Yeah, that's correct. So in that initial instance, we'll need to tank mix glyphosate together with Barricade. Uh, but as we saw with that trial work in the ACT, once we knock that post-emergent uh, population down and the pre-emergent aspect uh, and power of barricade will stop those weeds coming back through. Um, got quite a few to go. Um, what are the soil residues like in terms of future planting in sprayed areas? So the soil residues will mean when we say up to six months, okay, um, then replanting into those areas with things like seed no, don't do that, right? Because the half-life of the product of prodiamine is quite long. So it's a, a factor that um, if you are, let's say, in a, a turf situation, right, and we're spraying it over the top, then we can't reseed back into that because the half-life is so long and it's going to impact that developing uh, root structure. Uh, when it comes to, you know, potted media or open space garden beds or things like that as well, then there's going to be a, a bit of a limitation there that if you do need to actually transplant, um, you know, new plants back into an area as well, you'll need to time the amount or time your application to when you might be doing some of that work. So let's say, for instance, you get a lot of winter weeds in your area. Obviously, you know, we, we would have applied it depending on what part of New Zealand that you're in. We'll be applying it, let's say, right about now. Uh, but you may not be transplanting any, you know, uh, plants through that winter period because they're just not going to grow. So we'll, we'll monitor then the weed control with barricade once we get to that six-month mark, uh, and then we then say, okay, uh, it's springtime now. Let's do our transplant. We get our plants nice and nice and healthy, and then we apply the product after that to control our summer weeds. Great. Um, one more question. Do you, uh, do you have to apply it under mulch or can it be applied over the top of the mulch? That's work that we're currently doing. The advice at this point in time is apply it under mulch. Okay, so again, time it around when you're going to be, you might be remulching areas out there uh, at your, at your uh, workplace. So if you're, if you're planning to go out and uh, redress a garden bed or something like that, apply the barricade first and then put the mulch on top. Uh, but in that trial that we, we uh, initiated there at the ACT, that was actually sprayed directly over the top. Uh, but that's some work that we're working on at the moment, but label directions at this point in time is to apply it under mulch. Great. Um, could you tell us why you would choose barricade over simazine? Uh, simazine over here, I mean, well, simazine has the potential to really sort of move around a lot. Um, so that was one of the, um, you know, one of the factors that I think the barricade has a, a much better fit for this sort of scenario is that 
you know, simazine has that potential to leach, has that potential to move, uh, and then therefore it may impact other areas. Uh, who know? I, you know, uh, depending on the you know, situation that you're applying it to. So, in our scenario, and our recommendation, or our uh, preferred option in that scenario, when we're applying barricade, we know it's not going to leach, and we know it's not going to be mobile, uh, and where you place it, where you where you uh, apply it to, that's where it's going to stick, and that's where it's going to work. Great, um, quite a few more to go, Brett. So keep in, keep going. Um, what happens if uh, the product is not activated? Look, um, it, it the product will be activated. Um, so once we take mix it to our recommended rate and we apply it to our area, our garden bed or something like that, okay, it will just unfortunately just sit on that surface. So it will be ac activated per se, uh, but it's not going to then sit in that zone of weed activity. So the risk then is that if we're not washing that in, uh, to where we need to position it, right? It still is activated. Um, if we're not washing that in, it then has, we run that risk of, you know, the public are sort of walking across it and sort of dislodging, you know, some of the, the soil on top or the mulch on top or anything like that that we're applying it to. So um, it will be activated once you tank mix it, but the importance then is that, you know, we ensure that we're positioning it like any product, right? And I, I alluded to that before. It's not just barricade. If we're applying an insecticide for, you know, grub control or something like that, we need to ensure that we're positioning it in that zone of activity. So um, I think, you know, the, the longevity and the product will probably be wasted uh, if you just spray it over the top and just walk away and leave it um, to get the best out of it, you know, the label directions and all the work that we've done, wash it in uh, and you'll, you'll get those results. Great. So I think that partly relates to this uh, question, which is, does uh, foot or animal traffic over the garden beds disrupt the protective layer of barricade? So I'm guessing if we wash it in, that's that's all right. Once it's washed in, uh, with and, you know, we, we let it then dry. Then within that 48-hour period, it's binding to that soil carbon. Uh, so once it's there, it, it, it'll stick and stay there. Great. Um, can barricade be applied correctly with a knapsack? Will the drop size and volume be adequate? Yes. Yes, you can apply it with a knapsack. Uh, and that is on the label there in New Zealand. Uh, again, it comes back to calibration. So ensuring that we have a, a good uh, extra coarse or coarse or extra coarse nozzle on the end of your knapsack to ensure we have those large droplets to really help drive and position the product into that soil profile. Great. Um, so in the trial in Canberra, was it the high dose that you mentioned the as recommended dose or is it double or higher than that? That is a label rate. So the low... If you look on the barricade label, uh, both here and in New Zealand, the low rate is four litres per hectare, the high rate is eight litres per hectare in nursery and ornamental situations. So that was applied at low and high, four and eight litres per hectare. Great. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Um, will soil surfactants like water crystals in plant beds assist with the barricade uptake? Uh, no, because barricade will be, it, it's not going to have any difference to the product itself because, you know, it's binding to the, the soil particle and the organic matter within the soil. So soil colloids are going to be, as we all know, they're very, very fine. They're very small. Uh, you know, crystals that might be in a garden bed are just there to help, as we know, you know, increase the amount of water holding capacity and the like. Um, but, you know, again, it's positioning the product onto that soil colloid, into the, the soil carbon. Uh, so it's, water crystals won't affect it at all. Great. Um, in terms of user safety, what are the um, minimum personal protective equipment requirements for Barricade? So on the label in New Zealand, it's you know, if you're using it within a knapsack, uh, it's full PPE required. Uh, in other situations, it varies a little bit differently uh, on that label. but uh, if you need to refer to the label, simply go to our website, that's ingenoturf.co.nz, uh, and then under products, and you'll see then herbicides, 
Uh, you'll see Barricade in there. It's got all the, the label. It's got the safety data sheets uh, and associated tech sheets that go along with it. Great. Um, uh, we've got a couple of questions on a similar topic. Um, what are the impacts that um, Barricade has on uh, vertebrates and invertebrates in the area once it's been applied? Uh, very little to none. And that's you know, in part of... Uh, part of registration processes of any pesticide, you know, apart from like that introductory video that we saw uh, with formulation, we have to declare the formulation. What we do then is then uh, run that on a, a variety of different um, you know, toxicology, ecotox, human health, all that sort of scenario um, to then uh, provide all of that detail to the regulator. And then the regulator will say yes or no, there's your registration. Uh, and then in doing so, it will then uh, label that particular product, um, you know, a caution or a poison, et cetera. So um, the New Zealand regulatory system is a little bit different to the one here in Australia. Uh, in our um, submission here in Australia, uh, it was to a point where the product is known to be, it's unscheduled. Uh, so here in Australia, at least, uh, it's very, very, um, limited, you know, minimal PPE is required to apply barricade. And so when they arrive at those sort of decisions, it's not just, you know, the performance and how everything goes along with it, it's all the other associated flow-on effects to things like, you know, vertebrates and the like. So uh, for it to become unscheduled here in Australia, at least, it has very little to no impact uh, at all. Um, in New Zealand, as I said, the regulatory system is a little bit different, um, but, you know, the associated data that goes along with what we provide our regulators here uh, in terms of, you know, management or impact on vertebrates and the like, very little to none. Excellent. And last question. Um, looking to apply uh, barricade before planting in large areas, is that okay? Uh, before planting, well, if we're planting, it depends on, on what you're planting. Um, if we're planting sort of, you know, large shrubs or things like that, again, make sure that we have just that root system established um, because, you know, any pre-emergent herbicide uh, can still be uptaken by young roots at the surface and we want to make sure that we get that root system established first the bulk then of our nutrient uptake, water uptake within those lower levels of the soil before we apply the product. So, um, you know, we, we've mentioned a couple of times now, you know, get those areas established first uh, and then apply the product after that. Um, I've just had one more question pop in and we do have time. Oh, what? two more, sorry. <laughs> um, so in... in uh, this is a scenario-based question. So if the weather says that there will be rain in three days and you spray, um, but then don't get any rain for three weeks, what do you do? Uh, try and have some water on it if you can. Um, you know, you can have up to seven days to wash the product in. So um, it depends, I guess, you know, and I, I realise the challenge that, you know, it might face if we're spraying sort of large areas and we don't have an irrigation system. Uh, across those areas as well. Um, but if the weather forecast says, you know, three or four millimetres, you get nothing, then we need to try and get some water on that uh, to position the product. Otherwise, it comes back to one of the earlier questions. Even though it's activated within the tank, we're not going to get that level of longevity out of the product if we don't position it in that soil. So you will need to try and get some water onto it. Great. And then I... This, this is the last question of the moment, um, depending on whether extra people throw a few more our way, but can we use barricade in a water retention area? I would assume, or I assume that once it's fixed in, it won't move when floods occur. Is this correct? Yeah, there'll be, um, refer to the label on that. Yeah, in some scenarios, there will be what they call buffer zones, you know, so not to apply within certain uh, you know, distances between a water body uh, and the like. So just refer to the label on that, um, you know, but again, you know, the, the lack of leaching of the product will mean that if you do have a water body, 
you know, somewhere close to where you are spraying the product itself. Uh, once it's applied and fixed in the soil, you're not going to have any leaching concerns or any movement of where you've sprayed uh, and that product moving into that water body. Great. Well, that's all the questions that have come through. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Brett. That was a really great um, discussion on a, a really excellent pre-emergent weed control option. Um, if anybody has any further questions that they'd like to ask offline, uh, the email is up on the screen there, greencast.au at syngenta.com. And we'll be very happy to come back to you. You'll all receive a um, email in the next couple of weeks with a recording of this session if you'd like to watch it again um, to clarify anything further. Again, and thank you all for attending today. It's uh, it's been a great opportunity to discuss the product with you. Uh, as I said, we uh, are frequent visitors to New Zealand. We love coming over there. Uh, and then we'll obviously be present at your uh, your conference in May. So. Um, you know, we uh, we look forward to connecting with you and, and discussing, um, you know, Barricade or any other product within the range. So thank you for that. Great. Thanks, everybody.